UFO believers were once considered crazy, loony, fringe. But in the last few years, it's changed. Representative government is finally admitting what's right in front of their face because they're being forced to. Because now it's not just some guy in the sky or somebody out on their land seeing something. The sea change came when Congress ordered the Pentagon to produce the just release report. It's now a serious subject, but it wasn't always that way. My name was being disparaged. They were going to, to put, quote unquote, put an end to me. Former Pentagon official Lou Elizondo ran the Defense Department's program investigating UFOs called ATIP. That is, until 2017, when some higher ups decided he was pushing too hard. I was told by a senior representative who was in my chain of command that this whole thing was crazy and it sounded silly and that I better come and talk to him, otherwise it will affect my security clearance and, and people are gonna think I'm crazy. And lo and behold, it turns out that, yeah, my, my security clearance is absolutely now being threatened. Have they tried to block you from getting a job since you left the Pentagon? Well, you know, it's, it's a little more sophisticated than that. What they do is they, they threaten your security clearance. And my background in counterintelligence as a, you know, in security, a former special agent, that's all I'm qualified to do. So they know by cutting that string, um, in essence, that, that keeps me from, from being able to, to, to stay employed. And so that's a very clear way of saying, hey, you better mind your manners, you better shut up, otherwise we're gonna shut you up. After you left the Pentagon, officials there said you lied, that you were never part of ATIP. Was this retaliation? Well, of course it is. I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding. So, yes, it is absolutely an attempt to, to smear my reputation. You may disagree with him, but you shouldn't try to damage his career by saying he wasn't there. He was there trying to make him look bad. He doesn't deserve that. The personal professional toll has been, been, been severe. I, I, I live in the middle of nowhere because uh, of, of what this has done to me. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm gonna have a job tomorrow, to be quite honest with you, just for having this conversation with you. So why aren't more speaking out like you? Well, that's, uh, that's a fair question. Former F-18 pilot Ryan Graves, who says he routinely saw UFOs for several years, has an interesting metaphor to explain why other pilots who saw the same things remained mum. It's a long blade that gets cut in the yard, so uh, it's a career where you're, you're not likely to stick your neck out too far and be that, that outsider in the squadron. It's a very tight-knit community and, and it's very reputationally based. So it's a zero reward, <laughs> high-risk endeavor to you know, start talking about you know, unexplained objects. It sounds to me like what you're saying is nobody wanted to say it was an unidentified flying object because they'd be viewed as crazy. Hey, but in a nutshell, that's, that was the general feeling. I knew that I would be ridiculed. I knew that people would try to humiliate me, probably with some success. Former Defense Department official Christopher Mellon says he's been ridiculed plenty for speaking out, but the cause is worth the cost. I might never be able to serve in the government again. I might have to accept the career risks that cost so many other people. Christopher, I have to say, you are a Mellon. You come from a very famous family, a very well-to-do family. You didn't need this. I have uh, been fortunate and been blessed. I could afford to take a risk that many other people couldn't, who had more financial pressure. And I did need to feel engaged. Making money's great, but for me, it's not nearly as satisfying. So even though I knew that it was gonna make me a target of some people and so forth, you know, I would pay a price there. But that was more than compensated for by the reward of feeling that I'm helping our pilots, helping our military, and helping our country. Coming up, where do we go from here? It's gonna be really hard, as they say, to put the toothpaste back in the bottle. Elements of the truth are out there now. To do a whitewash of this topic, to continue the cover-up, at this point, people don't wanna feel dumb. It's gonna to be too difficult to back out after we've gotten this far. The Pentagon's UFO report doesn't answer the big question. What are these things and where do they come from? Nevertheless, it's part of a monumental seismic change. I never thought I would live to see it where the public is so fully engaged, where the media is treating it fairly, 
where Congress is interested. I am encouraged by the general sense of disappointment that I've seen within the, the public. This is where pop culture has moved us into a place where we have transformative policy, meaning people are unsatisfied with what the government told them about UFOs. You're happy because the report was so inconclusive, it's pissed off the public and pushed them to demand more answers. You, you nailed it, you nailed it, Harvey. They did not get the goods and the American public should push back. I'm encouraged by how discouraged people are. The report urges Congress to any up funds and other resources to solve this mystery, but there are skeptics. For me, uh, this is the beginning, but I'm afraid it's going to be the ending because if they just do it this one cursory glance, it's not going to help us. And uh, we need to satisfy not only my curiosity, but the American people. This is the beginning. UFOs are real. Your government done told you. And it's time we demand UFO transparency from our government. We should be telling people exactly what we know and when we know it. Peter Ragone has worked for Bill Clinton, Gavin Newsom, and Andrew Cuomo, and he runs a UFO lobby in Washington, D.C., keeping the government's feet to the fire. So when you lobby on the Hill, yeah. when you try and convince people to explore, to investigate, um, in the last couple of months especially, have you noticed a change, and if so, what is it? Absolutely. It is, without question, becoming easier and easier to get people to take this seriously. Ragone and others are pushing for a permanent commission to get to the bottom of UFOs. He believes the public is in the driver's seat. I believe that one of the ways that politicians are going to be responsive to you is when you get 10,000 emails. Uh, to your office. Now, how do you get 10,000 people organized? We will use the funds that we raise to help create um, tools for people to express themselves to their public officials. It is time where we start developing a broad spectrum, multidisciplinary study of the UFO phenomenon comparable in scale and scope to the Manhattan Project of 1939, the Atomic Project. And there's another big thing a huge thing that came out in the Pentagon report. It's urging military leaders and others to stop retaliating against people who report strange things in the skies. Feeling vindicated was never part of the calculus. I didn't do this to feel vindicated. I did it because it was, it was my sense of duty uh, and loyalty to the US government and the American people. It has been very, very difficult uh, and, and, and emotionally challenging. If the cost of bringing the truth to the American people is, is a personal cost to me, then then I, I'm quite willing to pay that price. And I hope no one ever has to go, go through what I went through and what, I, what I'm going through. There's a very practical reason to continue pressing for answers because as long as they're unknown, UFOs represent a major security threat, and the report squarely acknowledges this. Objects that can fly into our airspace, and we don't know what it is, we don't know how it works, we don't know who's behind the wheel, and frankly, if these things really can interfere with our nuclear capabilities, that's yet another threat. We know we're vulnerable. We don't know what the intent is. We have some idea of the capability, and that is deeply concerning. Threat is a function of intent and capability. If I were a pilot and I saw these objects that I could not identify, and I even saw them flying in squadron formation, and I'm up in the air not knowing what they are, where they're from, whether they're hostile or not, I would think that a very loud alarm would be sounded. The answer is yes, you would think that. <laughs> You know, I consider them a threat at the very most basic level, right? For me, my brothers and sisters that are flying could potentially hit one of these. Not everyone is on board with finding answers. There are elements in the, in the defense industry and defense establishment that do not want this out. And I think they will fight it tooth and nail every step of the way. The big questions remain unanswered. This has to be an ongoing thing. Seven days a week, 12 months a year, always. We intuitively know that the universe is vast and there's probably people out there who've had time to develop technologically. The whole thing is, man, are they coming here? And, and that's the question we need to answer. Have you answered that question? For me personally, I say it's highly likely. In the end, this is a case we must crack 
using the skills of a master detective. We're in a classic Sherlock Holmes situation, which is when you've eliminated everything else, whatever remains, however unlikely, it must be the answer. Godspeed, John Glenn. The United States has traveled into space. We've put men on the moon. We've now landed on Mars, explored Jupiter and Pluto. We've even sent a spacecraft into interstellar space. So, if there's intelligent life somewhere else in our vast universe, then we can go in their direction. Why couldn't they go in ours? The big question we need to answer, have they already done it? I'm Harvey Levin, good night. Oh my god. Oh my god.